They shouldn't have trusted me. Hi friends, my name is Farmer's Market today. It's been a while since we've done Frederick's Asian Kitchen and I realized that we haven't even done an Asian recipe. What's up with that? That just shows the whitewashing of myself. But I do have some Asian roots. And if you watched my vlogs in the past, every time I go home, I always eat my mom's dumplings because they're the best thing I've ever tasted. They're better than all other dumplings on the planet. That's biased, but like, I'm right. And it's just like a bonding moment. Like it's in Crazy Rich Asians, there's the dumpling scene. It's the recipe that's been passed down from my parents to me, to my cats in the future. No children, anytime soon. Nope, don't think about it. And I and I thought it'd be nice for me to share it with you because uh, I'm congenial. And this is my act of community service, but it's not easy to make. It requires some, you know, some... Why do you watch me? And it's time consuming. So you, this helps you learn how to respect the process because I think everyone takes them for granted. Buying the prepackaged ones is not the same. Going from scratch is the best way. So we're gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna first make the filling and then we're gonna add seasoning and then we're going to mix it. So there's four steps to make the final product. You have to first make the filling, then you add seasoning and then right after that you have to form them. And then if you want to, you can store, but usually you immediately boil them. I prefer boiled dumplings. I don't like the ones that are pan fried to be honest so the sun will set by the time we're done things you'll need for step one are chives mushrooms napa cabbage your choice of meat which is usually pork shrimp or chicken we're using chicken and shrimp today you also need salt and something to squeeze water out of which i will get to and also like 80,000 bowls you also need a bowl to put your mixture in which i'm going to put to the side because this napa cabbage is appearing as white on camera first step is make sure you have clean hands none of that nasty grimy <laughs> filthy, bacteria-infested phalanges. And we're gonna start off with all the chives. So I have about one and a half pounds right here. We eyeball it at this point, we don't measure this, but if you want the exact recipe, it's around one and a half pounds. And I'm going to do it in portions because you don't wanna do this all in one go or else you will never finish it. Because this is a lot of chives. And this is when you have to stand up and do this. Because you need a lot of pressure to be able to cut through everything fast you have to stand up for this some of you might ask why i don't use a food processor it doesn't do it evenly unless you have a great food processor i wouldn't recommend it and plus it's a good workout they didn't have food processors back in the day okay now you're probably wondering frederick this is a lot of chives this is your first batch out of three that you have to make why well we're making like 16 servings worth of dumplings. And chives can become very small when you cut them. Also, we tend to have more vegetables than meat in our dumplings, but you can vary your recipe if you tend to like meat more. But you wanna chop it until it looks a little bit like that. The smaller you go, even better. Also, this is not my ideal choice of cutlery, but it's my favorite one, because it looks cool. So once that's done, you're gonna put it in the bowl. This is basically going to be our main ingredient. So you wanna put it first so that you can mix it in better. Also, make sure you have an extra tablecloth underneath your chopping board because there's gonna be some fallout. Oh, like that. And it will definitely stain your chopping board. Try to bunch up the chives as easy as you can so that you can get a better slice. The end parts are obviously gonna be harder, but you can at least get the beginning. Done. There's a lot of banging and clanging going around here, but it has to sound like you're literally going to break the table. That's when you know you're doing it right. That step alone took me around 15 minutes to do just because you have to make sure there isn't any <coughs> long strands. If you want to be perfectionist about it, which I have to, because my mom is going to judge me when I'm not doing it right. We're going to chop up some mushrooms now, but you're just going to chop these around the same size as the other ones. So around that size. This is going to not only make it feel more meaty when you bite into it, but it adds good nutrition because we are all about that in this family. You can make these vegan too. You can literally take out all of the meat and replace it with mushroom or your own choice like tofu too. Just make sure it's firm tofu, none of that soft tofu. Let me know if you hate soft tofu like me. And because these are softer, you can just... Okay, the third step I think is one of the most time consuming. It's all of this. So Napa cabbage holds a lot of moisture inside. And when you add salt to something that contains a lot of moisture, it draws the water out. For a dumpling mixture, you don't typically want to have too much water content. Did I mention make sure you wash everything beforehand? <laughs> because it can make your dumpling explode when you boil it. So 
you want to draw the moisture out by adding salt once you chop it up. And the way you do that is by squeezing it with your bare hands a lot of times. And then you drain it through a cheesecloth or any other type of cloth. So you first want to cut it pretty small, not in strands, but more in like little cubes. And then you want to have an extra bowl handy because you're about to place all of it in. And yes, you must chop it so that the bottom part of the Napa cabbage isn't there. These are all individual leaves. So I literally don't have a bowl big enough for all of my mixture. This is what I have. I'm gonna split each one into two parts and I'm going to add around four teaspoons of salt to each. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to buckle up. <laughs> crack everything you can. Oh. And you're going to literally do this. You're going to crunch it together until all the water comes out. So let me show you what it looks like before and then this is it after. Do you see how the volume changed? That's only me doing it for one minute and we're going to switch to the other one because if you let it sit more, the more water comes out and you can get it to be even smaller. So as you can see, there's a pool of water now right there. All of that, oh Jesus. <laughs> all of that came from the lettuce and you want to get it all out. So once you're done with that, what you're going to do is get a thin cloth. You can use cheesecloth or just a regular tablecloth that you know water can go through. You're gonna place your mixture in. Also, if you got like a paper cut on your hand, don't do this, it will hurt because the salt will get into the wound. Oh, that's a phrase. Mmm. <laughs> Ready, watch this. Do you see how much water is already leaking? Watch this. Hello, isn't that so cool? It's like milking lettuce. If you made almond milk before, this is the same way. So you want to squeeze this till the point where no water comes out or very little water comes out. What I do is tie it together at the top and then push down. If you're using cheesecloth, I would do double cheesecloth because you'll probably rip it. You have to be pretty aggressive. I mean, look how much water is in there. You all see? Oh Jesus, stop it. You get my point. As you can see, my hands are getting purple now from how long I've been doing this. <sighs> okay. I think I'm done with this one. When you unravel it, it should just form a nice, pretty ball. See how perfect it is? And you just place it right on it. Now you have to do it with the other batch. This thing is just leaking, oozing, spilling. This bowl is almost filled with water. The good news is if you have an extra bowl, you can start using it to help you by pushing down. And then as you push, you can just do that. Okay, I think I've reached the max with this one too. So let's see if it makes a ball. Look at that, plop. They're like big boobs. <laughs> so all the water must be thrown away. You don't want to pour it on your plants because there's salt in there. Last step is your meat. So it's hard to dice raw meat. I mean, it doesn't look like it's diced, but basically you want it to look like it's almost a paste. And we have around one pound worth of chicken and shrimp. Also the shrimp has water content too. Uh, I'm gonna first do the chicken. And you can obviously do this with one knife, but if you're a dual wielder like me, This is your favorite part. Here we go. And yes, I said dual wielder. Ah! It's actually not easy to do it on a table. You wanna do this on the floor. Why is it easier on the floor? Because you get more pressure. You hear that beat? So because this is really hard to cut through, you have to do many layers. So you just do this, you fold it inwards, and then you reach up. Oh, starting to sweat up in here. And my hands are purple. So you'll know when it's done when there's basically no resistance and all the tendons have been broken. So like this right here, that, that white film is keeping that part intact. You'll know when it's done when you can do this, when nothing clings to each other and it just falls. And you know what's so fun? You can just do this. Look at that. I'm gonna get the shrimp now and place this into the mixture. Shrimp is easier, just make sure you get ones that don't have any shells on them and heads, and you also turn into a paste. Just be careful though, this tends to fly. You are in the splash zone for this. So you just scoop it up like some ice cream, <laughs> and then you put it in the mixture. Okay, I am legit sweating now because that is intense, but I won the battle. Now all you have to do is mix this together. So I like to use chopsticks, as does every Asian in the world. Oh, <laughs> cut the cameras. You don't have to mix it too well because you still have to add seasoning. I'm just trying to get it a little bit settled in. So your mixture should look a little bit like this. Now I'm going to wait for my mom to wake up because I need her help for the next part as she won't tell me the amount of teaspoons you need for the seasonings. So you want to refrigerate this until you're ready to do everything. And now I'm going to clean 
all this shit up before my mom yells at me. Turns out my mom has <laughs> extremely big chops. Look at this, compare it to my head. She uses this exclusively for dumplings, but what we need to do, part two of the mixture, we're going to use three eggs, olive oil, more salt, this chicken seasoning. It's hard to explain. I'm gonna pull up a picture, but it's like, bouillon seasoning basically and it's crack some sesame oil and five spice powder first you want to crack the eggs so just okay nah it's in the make one she like five tablespoons eight and ten one cup it's like, a, it's like five how much okay oh okay one way oh it smells just like a chinese restaurant so i'm gonna try to translate that you need one cup of extra virgin olive oil five teaspoons of salt five teaspoons of the chicken spice and then probably like one teaspoon of five spice three tablespoons of sesame oil you want to make sure you get all the things at the bottom like the chives because you have to make sure everything is incorporated. If you're trying to veganize it, I would recommend using a egg alternative or a binding agent. You can use tapioca starch. You could use arrowroot powder. I wouldn't recommend flour, but you definitely want to use oil. That is essential. Might add a little more, honestly. A little more five spice and a little more oil because it, it's not... It's not binding. <laughs> and I love five spice. If you're curious on what's inside it, star anise, fennel seed, cinnamon, cloves, and cardamom. And this is a Chinese brand. They spelled cloves wrong. They spelled loves. More oil. Okay. So the dumpling wrappers we use are Shanghai style. Usually you only can find them at Asian supermarkets or maybe a Whole Foods. So my mom told me to add more oil just because it's not it's not wet enough in the sense that it's not thick. You don't want to add water to it. You'll know it's done when it's like this. And Beijing style is the same. Oh. <laughs> my mom is the best rapper out of all of us. Only I can do it and then my dad can sort of do it and my sister cannot. So suck on that. And I'm going to show you how she does it because to this day, I don't understand it. Okay, <laughs> Sama. Hello. <laughs> She's getting the, the fancy plate for the thumbnail. Oh! First one always straight behind. First one, it's very hot. The rapper? Yeah, rapper okay. is very hot. Okay, the first rapper is the worst. Oh, hey, your meat has a lot of meat. Chopped. Oh, I've chopped it for a long time. You haven't chopped it. You haven't chopped it. You haven't chopped it? Mm. Like the chives? Yeah, okay. Oh. The big chives haven't been chopped. How can I not have it? On the side. Still don't understand. Let me time lapse my mom because she'll be doing it better. Now, how much do you usually find? One tablespoon? Two? Two. Spoons? Okay. First middle. Oh no, mama. Okay. So you have to make sure you pinch down the sides or else it explodes when you boil it. One. You know how much? <laughs> I have one, she has one, two, three, four. She has seven. Well, the filling you may have. <laughs> yeah, some too, too big. Okay. My wrappers are still too dry, so what you can do is just add some water to only one half of the wrapper, and then when you fold it, it'll seal better. But you don't want to add it to both sides, or else neither of them will stick. So one side is wet, one side is dry. I'm going to try to get a close up of this, so you first pinch the middle. This is how my mom does it she folds it in between her hands in this crevice and it just closes like that, and it magically works. It, it does that somehow. And then you pinch that together. Then you do the same side to this. You hold it in between, and then you pinch. And that gives you sort of a dumpling. Let's just compare which one is my mom's. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> how much omen we make? All three, and how long can you freeze? Oh. One month finish. Okay. If you want to cook it from frozen, you must let it thaw first outside. Just leave it in the refrigerator. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> She's done with her tray. It's also a complicated way to boil. Uh, I can't explain why, but you'll just see when we get there. Oh, the? 
Yeah, we'll take getting better. You can. Oh, good job. Yay. Na papa okay la. Make dumplings. Ni kap okay. Oh, and my mom is able to get the stomach of the dumpling very filled. We call it the stomach. Now, what if need the dumpling wrapper dry la? It's a okay fix. Hot towel. Hot towel. Yeah. Okay. So if you buy the dumpling wrapper and it feels a little crusty on the sides, especially, uh, you can microwave it for a little bit, or you can use a hot towel to like get it to soften. Some too dry la, little. Little, yeah, but to the crack. Yeah, crack. Oh, if the middle cracks, you're ruined. Yes。Your filling has to be dry or not not have a lot of moisture. Oh. Uh. like chives, only chives. If time to the taste strong during celery, mm -hmm. celery, celery. Yes. Oh, box. No. Okay. So we have finished making everything. There's only a little bit left over. Boil water, put some salt. Now explain this. Explain to, yes. When boil, one time, two time. So when it's boiling, you put water in, some water. Some water. And, and then when it, time, when it boils again, put okay. more water. Why is it so long to boil for 10 minutes? Why is it so long to boil for 10 minutes? Why is it so long to boil for 10 minutes? Okay, so you have to let the water boil first. Once it starts boiling, you put your dumplings in, and then you have to immediately add water. Cold water? Yeah, cold water. Cold water. And then you have to bring it to a second boil, add cold water again, because if you don't, it makes the dumplings too soft. Make a break. Oh, it's already boiled. Yeah? Yeah? How much? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm scared. Ah! <laughs> now, you have to add water. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Well, stop touching it. <laughs> Mama! Thank you. So typically you can eat this with a sauce that's usually a combination of soy sauce, vinegar, oil, and sugar. Okay, you can. But we use this vinegar. It's called ch ch chink. Not the middle school bullies calling me chink, uh, but you use this one. Yes, I'm eating, I'm eating. Okay, this is the end of the video. If you enjoyed, give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every time I have time to post. Social medias are right here, and my second channel, and my podcast channel, and my gaming channel. And as always, I love you guys, and everything is less than three. I can't do the sign today, so peace. I know it's good. This is not a mukbang who wants me to do this. Mmm, hot. So also awesome hot though. I did well. Bye. And today's fan art of the week goes to Astrocad. Thank you so much for your submission. This looks great. I love the sunflowers in the background. Love the. I just love the bug hat and the colors in general. You have a great style. So thank you so much.